Can you, I, and I, I'm forgetting the Well, so it was kind of amazing that? to me. This was new information, to, at least to most of us, if not all of us around the table. Enbridge actually caused some of the, the coding damage themselves. When they were installing they, the supports. Yes, okay. and they dropped an anchor uh, from a barge, not on the pipeline itself, but on a cable that nobody knew was under there, at least Enbridge didn't know. What is the cable? It's a They think it's an abandoned communications cable. Okay. And they, when they pulled up the anchor, Apparently, they, they snagged a, a length of this cable, then accidentally drove, dragged it across the pipeline and ripped off part of the coating. When we say state agencies or state departments, I think we have to be careful because that implies all of them were notified. And, and I'm not aware of any notifications, and my staff is very good at keeping me informed of things. Um, when that issue with the ankle when that whole thing occurred. Do you know which state agency was informed or what's the procedure for that? As to I, am, I am not aware of any state regulation that required us to report this. Um, we did voluntarily <laughs> as we were having discussions with MDQ and the agency for energy as well. The state officials asked, were you notified? Did you notify the state immediately? Yeah. First he said yes and they said, well, it was within a few days. Then he said, actually, we're no, under no obligation to notify the state at all. Is that true? Uh, I, I actually don't know the law around that. I assume it is, because none of the state people contested that. I would say, even if they're not under legal obligation to notify the state right away, you'd think they'd be under a moral obligation. There's a moral obligation. Right away. Do, and, it's, but, a, it's mostly federal jurisdiction, so I, you know, I believe that it, they may not have been required by any law. Is this under investigation? Don't know. For the sake of the one million jobs that depend on the health of our Great Lakes, we must do everything in our power to protect them. That is why, as governor, I will immediately file to enjoin the easement and begin the legal process to decommission Line 5. And anything short of that is insincere. So give us your position on Line 5. Where do you see things as it stands now? Well, you know, I look at Line 5 as a ticking time bomb. So. Uh, I believe that we have to shut it down. How does that work? Well, look, if I'm governor, uh, there are a lot of different ways that I can act. And number one, um, opposing the easement that currently exists. Number two, leveraging the Department of Health and Human Services or the Department of Environmental Quality uh, around an imminent threat uh, issue, which which I believe Line 5 poses. Are you interested in exploring alternatives to pipelines? I mean, or, or talk about it. I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, as an engineer, seriously, we, sure. I used to do failure modes and effects analyses on yeah. systems. So as a chemist, I, and I analyze crude oil with my own hands using chemical instrumentation. And you look at the reliability of all the different components in a given system, uh -huh. pipes are about as reliable as you get. Yeah, but here? We are facing this imminent catastrophe here in the state of Michigan. I mean, this will be the biggest economic and ecological catastrophe our state has ever seen, and there is no one willing to do anything about it. <laughs> um, would you show us around a little bit? Show us the vet? Show us Joe's garage here. Yeah. That, that is first place in the 2015 Corvette Crossroads show. It's a 69, and uh, it's, it's a hot rod, you know? This is what made America great right here. I'm an old-fashioned <laughs> gearhead. You, you want to hear it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Consume some some fuel. Fuel, you what, dude? I got a hot rod and five motorcycles. All right. Now I gave a lot. I understand electric alternative energy really well, and I really believe we need to diversify our energy mix. But at this point in my life, I, I'm still big on unleaded premium. Gotcha. <laughs> So they put the thing in. They, they they put the thing in as best they could at the time. Yeah. Haphazardly, they, and there was some trial and error. Uh, well, it, yeah. Nor they made a whole lot of decisions, and some of them on the fly. And they made a lot of mistakes. It, and it, it worked beautifully, you know. Okay. On okay. time, on budget. Uh, so has, we don't know if it has leaks. worked for for longer than they ever said it. The should. pipe has had a lot of leaks, but not here. Not here. As far as that's a whole different pipe. Okay. If you remember the pipe models, I showed okay. you. So, but when they put the, we knew a whole lot more about the the currents and about the conditions when they put these 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 supports in, and they're failing already, as far as you can tell. There, well, there's certainly some issues. Okay. You know, really, this is, this comes back to. Uh, 
could get complicated. Okay. Let's say that that um, the state came to Enbridge and said, okay, shut it down. Say that if, if our objective is to shut the line down, how do we do that? That's a very good question. Okay. Um, there are some um, strategies, different strategies being proposed as to how to actually get that pipeline to be shut down. Mm -hmm. um, is it the federal government? Is it the state government? Um, is it just the part in the straits? The biggest lever, really, quite frankly, is the Great Lakes, um, the Great Lakes connection and the fact that there's an easement on Great Lakes bottom land through the straits. That lease happens to be on Great Lakes bottom lands to allow a pipeline to be occupying state bottom lands and waters that are held in public trust. What does that mean? When Michigan joined the Union, it took all the navigable waters, the title, in trust for citizens for fishing, boating, swimming, navigation, drinking water, all the essential needs. It's a paramount right to all other private uses. The state cannot alienate the public trust. They cannot subordinate it to the, a company that has an easement or a pipeline. It's an in perpetuity responsibility that is infused in that 1953 easement. The easement is no better than the public trust doctrine. That, that easement has never been enforced. That's right. And what do you make of that? Honestly, it, I think it's emblematic of the way that, um, you know, our natural resources have been corporatized and how our politicians have literally been bought and paid for by private companies. I mean, has Enbridge just got the, our state by the balls and that kind of... I think it's more about uh, one is not providing the leadership, uh, not having the compassion, and not having the will and the courage to act. When you get to a point where it looks like the state has, or the, the public trust doctrine is threatened, the state has reserved powers to revoke that easement. Reserved constitutional so why don't public they, trust why don't powers. They do it? It's obviously that they've made a, a political decision not to do so. Even though they have all the power in the world to do that. So that's strategy number one. I think that what people need to appreciate is that this actually is within the purview of the Office of Michigan Attorney General. The Attorney General, uh, who's the le chief legal officer of the state of Michigan, uh, has the power to say that the easement that was granted to Enbridge's predecessor has been breached and shut the pipeline down immediately. What's that? I, mean, um, I Yes, I would say political considerations. It's uh, easy for someone in uh, Bill Schutte's position to come out with strong statements uh, demanding that the pipeline get shut down and then doing nothing to accomplish that. And the days are numbered on the pipeline. Let's face it. The days are numbered. The clock's ticking. Because we wouldn't build that pipeline today underneath the Great Lakes. How many tomorrows will it face? Well, it will be in limited duration. So the clock's ticking. The days are numbered. But now we need to bring in the technical expertise to figure out how do we supply the energy needs so people have propane in the winter to be warm. Maybe it means a different pipeline or expanding existing pipelines that go around the Great Lakes instead of under the Great Lakes. Strategy number two, in 1955, the state of Michigan passed the Great Lakes Submerged Lands Act. The Submerged Lands Act codified the public trust doctrine, that is that doctrine that I just described, was incorporated into a statute. And that says nobody can use occupied public trust bottomlands without an agreement from 1955 on if there are new structures or new occupancies. Legally, it's important to Enbridge that everything they do be maintenance. If they really do a complete rebuild, they've got to jump through a bunch of legal hoops and get a bunch of permits. Okay. So, obviously, if it's under the under the easement, if there's a scoured area under the line that's greater than 75 feet, it violates the easement. So that's one. That's one of those other violations, but what I'm getting to is a little more serious than that. You know, the, the real point is, is we've got a whole different beast than what Bechtel put down there. Right. This and, is and a Frankenstein monster look, hey, now. It's time to take a holistic look at the thing, which nobody is doing. Is Enbridge in violation of the easement? Yes. I, here's the, the rub that, that really needs to be, well, better understood. Enbridge knew from 2014 until now 
that their new engineering design with these anchor supports was actually causing damage to their pipeline. And they failed to disclose this information to both the state and the federal government. And they continued to practice and this. And they continued to advocate for this damaging engineering design as the panacea for fixing uh, their pipeline. Right now, last month, when 22 anchor permits were again permitted by the state of Michigan, we're now at 150 anchor permits, which are not anchors. The anchors are simply what goes in the bottomland. It's actually a saddle that supports and suspends the pipeline up and, in the water. And have been extremely, well, they've even, either been put in wrong or they can't withstand the pressure. Well, that's one problem as well. Or so, they've caused other so damage. So you look at the 53 design, it's not working because of the currents, right? Mm -hmm. It's scouring, grout bags didn't work, anchors are not working. And now we're doing uh, not only six, not 16 anchors, but 150. You know, that's two miles, almost two miles of pipeline suspended above the bottom lands in the water column. That's not the 1953 pipeline that was authorized. When you do maintenance on something, and this happens in every industry, if you do enough maintenance, when you're done, it's kind of like the old mechanic story of uh, fixing a uh, car by jacking up the radiator cap and putting a new car under it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Right. right. There might be a pure edge That would piece it. Yeah. That, right. would, that would do it. You know. Now there's another application that was filed just to, uh, just last month or so for 48 more anchor supports to put another mile of pipelines. So now you've got nine so miles of pipeline. We're going to have almost three miles suspended. That's such a material change in design that we're at a point, all right, that we're way, way past the 1953 easement, all right? So you have the 1953 original pipeline and the easement. The easement is subject to the public trust. Two years later, a public trust statute comes into play, imposes certain standards, all right? And the, the agent, the, the Embridge has never obtained any authority under that line. Look at that. Ah, go back, what is go that? back. What is that? There was something I just didn't see before. Back What's all that cable bit. and shit? Where am I? Okay. That son of a bitch bends down. Yes, oh my God. Okay. <coughs> all right. Where are we all at? Right. You know, that might be the one I'm looking for. Right there. Really? Okay, I'm just making a note. 931. That may be this one that I say is where okay. the washout occurred. Look, and because that's where it goes over the nose and bends down. Sure look at that. Shit. So there's what you look for, my man. Okay, that's a. Ooh. Okay. Look, now that, that that I can't deny that is bending down by how much? Well, I can look at the IOI data. It's almost five degrees. See this? That sheet's a coating laying right. on the bottom. And there's an iron. Some of the hoops. Yeah. Maybe it's just hoops. But that that's just broke off a long time ago. Yeah, probably. When, but that I swear that's why are one these of the things places. covered in? In why? Why can we still see these hoops? The current. What was your experience like on the island uh, at, the, at, the, at the, the, the big summit? It was surreal. It was surreal because here we are, you know, we're at an event that is in part sponsored by Embridge. Um, you had conference after conference, seminar after seminar, none of which uh, raised the topic of Line 5. Even though you can see it and from the porch. Here we are, we have these, um, you know, politicians and the CEOs and all the movers and shakers in the state of Michigan. And we're all lined up chatting 
on the porch, the, this mammoth gigantic porch of the Grand Hotel, looking out into the Straits of Mackinac, and yet we're not even supposed to be discussing that issue. Right, there's more shit everywhere. Perfect. And there I am going inside and watching as all of these elected officials are enjoying the food and the beverages provided by Enbridge. And these giant signs put up saying, you know, that this all brought to you by your friends at Enbridge. I've seen the, um, I've seen some of the repairs that are being done and it really looks like a home repair job with duct tape and, and It so, literally is I, I, duct tape. Yeah, and I know I've seen <laughs> it some of it. So I've actually seen the underwater okay. videos and that is concerning and there's wild. ways of going yeah. off and beefing that up. I mean if you were to, to, if you were the engineer originally working on it, would you have said this well, is a great idea, let's put a pipeline well, what underneath? what would you suggest? I mean, oh well, going around it, finding out, well there are many alternatives such as rail truck, I mean there are a lot of ways of Getting, yeah, but getting the reliability the on that, you're more likely to have an accident with a rail truck or a ship than But not a million gallons. Well, you I mean, I mean, you can shut this down. So if it's an issue of shut-off speed on the line, yeah. there's ways to go off and put in shut-off valves at a more frequent interval. So this is one of the first days we've actually seen vehicles of any kind out here. And I see there's some kind of security, but I think it's like a local security firm. Yeah. So this is a new fence. It's not a very um, big one. <laughs> Looks portable. I don't see anything. Enbridge has quite a relationship with the state. Yeah, there's a lot of crony capitalism that goes on inside of uh, Lansing. That's one of the reasons I wrote this book, Wrestling Gators. I'm tired of that. I mean, this is, do you consider these guys, do you consider Enbridge Swamp? I mean, do you consider these guys Gators? Well, I, I don't know too much about Enbridge right now, okay. to be frank. I mean, we also carry the, the responsibility. We have the, the Bottomlands Act. We have, we're the ones who have to act. But as the state who has the biggest risk, you'd think that we would have one of the most progressive environmental policies in the, in the union, but we are extraordinarily regressive when it comes to that. Yeah. You're taking an anti-pipeline stance. Yeah, I do not believe that we the should be investing in, pipelines. in moving fossil fuel. Look, we've got a lot of pipelines to be built in Michigan, just not moving oil. Mm -hmm. They should be moving water in places like Flint. And there'll be plenty of work building pipelines under the ground. It's not I as though the pipe fitters are gonna be out of a job. Out of a job, exactly. I and by the way, just because a pipe is old doesn't mean necessarily that it's bad. I mean, that fucker is bent to use engineering professional kind of language. Because anything you can do to safeguard it is great, and I appreciate that. I mean, okay. you don't want anchors hooked onto it and then dragging along Because we've the had ground. that. Right, yeah. I know, so you don't want that. <laughs> Why did they drop anchor? Do you know? Nobody. I mean, we don't even know who they are. Uh, eventually, the truth will come out. But I think it's a mystery. I'm not 100% certain that that it's the vessel that Shooty has sued. Dark and stormy night kind of scenario going on here. This rig here, the tug bar. What would have happened is the tug would have come up the straits, past Sheboygan, past Mackinac City, gone pretty much right through the center of the Mackinac Bridge, heading due west. And then it would have turned a little bit to the right towards Escanaba, which is where it was headed. And about a mile, the other side of the bridge is where the two pipelines run across. Enbridge eventually released two very crappy photographs. And there's two big dents in the pipe. And one of the dents is 5% of the diameter pipe. That's almost enough to punch through the wall. So this thing took a heck of a whack. How big an anchor is this? I can go to a chair of uh, particular kind of anchors that are used on the Great Lakes. And it turns out to be an anchor that weighs about 2,000 kilograms. You can see that the anchors on the lake's contender here, they're big boys. They're six feet across. It's easy to scale that off the photograph because the depth marks on the freighter are right there. Uh, so it wasn't these anchors. They're just too big to have done that. So at this point, the people that own this outfit, uh, they, 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 they're not saying anything. They didn't say they did it, they didn't say they didn't do it. There is no excuse for the ship's actions, which risked devastating environmental harm 
as well as the loss of vital infrastructure for communications, electrical power, and heat for residents of the Upper Peninsula. I have asked the Attorney General to begin legal action against the ship's owners immediately to ensure every member of the maritime community understands the No Anchor Zone is vital. Because it's 